third graders, today we're going to learn a little bit about volcanoes. Scientists spend a lot of time defining and grouping nature. We practice this skill at the very beginning of the school year when we group food in a fridge. Then we spent most of the year talking about how living things are grouped as invertebrates or vertebrates and how those vertebrates are grouped as fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, or birds. Well, volcanoes are also classified into different groups. Can you form a guess as to how they might do that? Go ahead and take a few minutes to think about it. Have some ideas? Well, just for fun, I asked a few people around school how they thought volcanoes were classified. That's a good question to think about. I would categorize volcanoes as either active or inactive, and I would include either land or sea. And those are the only categories I can think of at the moment. <laughs> hmm. um, well, active or non-active? Yeah, dormant, oh, active, yeah. That's good. or there's one more. Or yeah, it's whether it's gone off in a recent amount of years, if it's known to have ever gone off, or if it's never gone off, mm. as far as we know, I think. And now you can watch on to learn a little more about volcano classification and eruptions. Hello, third graders. We're here with special guest, Judah. Judah, who's going to talk to us about volcanoes. You are learning today about three kinds of volcanoes. Uh, Judah, can you tell us how you think they might be classified, volcanoes? Um, they're classified by the size. That's right. Volcanoes are classified by their size and their shape. Scientists spend most of their time trying to classify or identify things. How does all of God's universe fit inside various little categories? So we can better rule and take dominion over our Earth, uh, we classify things. And so this is how volcanoes are classified. We have three different kinds. We have our shield. Shield. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of like, I, I always think of Captain America's shield. Just the perfect shape. And then we have our composite and our cinder cone. And the composite is kind of a combination of both of these two. The shield volcano has a really low flow. It's lots and lots of lava that will slowly fold out and slowly build upon itself. So it has lots of really thick layers because the lava is very slow, mo slow moving. The, lo um, the lava flow you'll find in Hawaii is like this. It's a shield volcano. Mount St. Helens though and Mount Vesuvius was this volcano, the cinder cone. It's not slow moving. It's huge explosion. And it's not just lava either. It's lots. Do you know what else might have shot out of the volcano? Uh burning ash and smoke. That's right. Burning ash and smoke. And it was so intense, um, it happened so quickly that the people of Pompeii from the Mount Vesuvius eruption, they couldn't escape. There was this huge eruption of ash that went 12 miles into the sky and created this huge cloud above. And then as soon as it fell down, it just obliterated everything in its path. And it was hundreds of degrees um, in Celsius, like three or 400 degrees Celsius, I believe, and it just came and attacked everything. They could not run away. The lava, though the ash came at 70 miles an hour. You could not escape it. So, uh, don't be near active volcanoes. And that is the other way, incidentally, how you can classify a volcano. Scientists don't agree on the, whether or not a volcano is active, dormant, or extinct. What do you think an extinct volcano is? Uh, like, not it doesn't have any lava anymore? Yeah, it is not going to explode again. That's exactly, it's extinct. It's not going to explode. And everyone can agree on that definition. It's pretty simple. But the active and dormant volcano, uh, pretty much anything that will ever explode again uh, is a dormant volcano. And an active sometimes has that same category, or if it's currently exploding, um, it's active. Okay, so we're going to do uh, not an experiment for you today, but we're going to model something. We're going to show you kind of what it might look like. So we have our baking soda and our vinegar. So let's see what that is gonna. So should we try? Do you want to try it out for us? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do our.
you're a model now. Okay. So pour the vinegar. Pour the vinegar. Let's see what happens. Okay. Whoa. Is a reaction taking place? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, look at the whole volcano. It just like melted. Yeah, it did. Whoa. Just <laughs> like the rock might have melted. Cool. That's a shield volcano, and then it would slowly build layers and layers and layers. It would happen again and again and again. Should we try? Can we get some more? Should we do it again? Because then it wouldn't, if it was active or dormant, oh, yeah. it's going to happen again. So then it would have more magma in its chamber, which would then come out as lava. June's gonna demonstrate the lava coming out of the side vents. Oh, all right, and then the explosive part.
you like to add the baking soda? Sure. Okay, so the first thing that would have happened is the volcanic ash would have gone into the air and just covered everything in a protective layer of ash. It would have uh, pr it preserved all of the bodies that were there, preserved all the artwork that was there, anything that was on stone, all the vases, almost everything in that city was preserved. And it happened so quickly, fresh bread was still left on tables. <laughs> Super fast, what happened? So the very first thing that happened was it exploded. <laughs> Made this huge film of dust everywhere. Everywhere. And then, the people couldn't breathe. They, could, they couldn't see. <laughs> They couldn't move. And then came the a huge cloud, and then the, the, the ashes whoosh, went all over everything, everywhere. It just, it just covered everything in way. You couldn't escape. Then came the lava. And not only did the lava come, but with the cinders and ashes came all sorts of burning rock fell down. Uh, pumice fell down, all sorts of explosives fell out of the sky. Would have been scary. Those people are not happy to get there. <laughs> and that is Mount Vesuvius. Cinders and ashes. 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 Now that you've seen our models in action, why not turn it into an experiment? You can certainly use supplies from your kitchen to have just a lovely afternoon experimenting with how volcanoes might have flow. You could use some baking soda and some vinegar, just like we did, and then a container of some sort, a Tupperware, or anything that you have around, or an old bottle, anything could work. If you want, you can make a Play-Doh volcano, or your own paper mache model, or something to go around it, but it isn't really necessary. It just is kind of neat. Dish soap does something special to it. You will have to try to find out what dish soap might do to the reaction. So what could your question be to form your hypothesis? What happens if I add more vinegar? What happens if I add less vinegar? More baking soda, less vinegar. What happens when I add soap? What happens if I have a tall volcano, a short volcano? All these things could lead to your hypothesis. Once you choose your variable, then you can form your hypothesis. If I add more baking soda, then the reaction will happen faster. If I add more soap, then it will have a taller reaction than if I added no soap. And you have to make sure you're doing something you can measure, like speed or distance or time or length. So to get a little more specific, maybe to the same amount of vinegar each time you try it, you could add one more teaspoon of baking soda and then you could see how many seconds it takes for the reaction to occur or how far it goes each and every time you can me measure the length of how far the reaction gets from the source so i hope you do try it should be a lot of fun and if you do mrs a and i would love to hear about it happy experimenting <laughs>